Got a lot on the docket today. Going to be doing my review of Looney Tunes back in action. This is the first time I've seen this movie. Uh, you know, I've, I've seen kind of these live action uh, slash animated hybrid films that uh, Warner Brothers has produced in the past. My favorite, one of my favorite movies of all time being uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit? Which, funny enough, Warner Brothers actually considers this, they consider this a part of a trilogy, if you will, of their live action slash animated hybrid films, where, where, where Who Framed Roger Rabbit is the first one, and then the second one, Space Jam, so this took a fucking, I mean, just a mon monumental decline in quality. And then we got to uh, fucking Looney Tunes back in action, Chad. They're back in action. Ha ha. So that's what they considered their weird fucked up trilogy. I don't consider it that way. I consider Who Framed Roger Rabbit just his own separate little entity. It's, it's this perfect little piece of cinema chat. I adore that film so much. Again, it's probably my, t if I had to put like a top 20 list together, it's probably in there. I absolutely adore that film. I think it's a, it's a wonderful appreciation for uh, Disney and Warner Brothers animation. I love the time periods they set in, like the night, the early or in the late 1930s, early 19. Or no, I guess it's no, it's the late 1940s. I just thought that was so inspired. And Bob Hoskins was great. He was the perfect actor for that role. Although he originally wasn't the, supposed to be uh, uh, cast in it. The, the studio wanted Eddie Murphy, but he passed on it, Jack, because his agent told him to do it. And Eddie Murphy fired his agent because he saw the movie later that year and went, fuck, I wanted to be in this. So, but then, Jack, <laughs> who's just as good as Bob Hoskins? Michael Jordan is Space Jam, which I'm sorry. I mean, we can kind of get into the review right now. I'll tell you, Space Jam is not a good movie. Like, I saw that in the theater. Maybe, maybe I saw it in the theaters, or maybe I saw it in VHS, like, ready for a blockbuster. I can't remember. But even I remember as a child, like, this is just kind of feels boring to me. And I, I don't think I've ever seen it again since then. Maybe some clips online. Obviously, the Lola Bunny clip, like, on repeat, you know. Obviously, as anyone else did chat, the Lola Bunny clip on repeat. Uh, but Lane June back in action, never saw it until now. Like, maybe, maybe I saw a trailer, like, in the theaters. Like, but when this movie came out, like, 2003, I want to say. 2002. Yeah, it was 2003 this came out. So, I definitely probably saw a trailer, chat. But I had no, I had absolutely no desire to see it whatsoever. And uh, I like to, th <laughs> my, 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 my lack of desire to see it was confirmed after watching this movie, Jack. So I'm going to tell you right now, uh, th th this is not a good film. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm going to, for those of you who are fans of it, I'm sorry, I am, I am just not. I really dislike this movie because it seemed to lose uh, the fact of what, what made Who Framed Roger Rabbit so special. And it's that, I don't know, I, it's like that film was so impeccably written to me. Like, so much of the humor really worked, despite it being, you know, overly goofy. But you actually had fucking characters, you know? Uh, and yes, they were reacting to the shenanigans of all the cartoon characters, but you, you fell for Bob Hoskins' character. And when you watch Space Jam, you don't give a shit about Michael Jordan. Fuck him, he's a rich guy. I don't care about him. He can barely act in that film. And when we get to here, I'll tell you this, Brendan Fraser, much better actor than Michael Jordan, no question about that. But he's barely given anything to do. His whole thing, chat, is just like, I'm going to be the straight man to all these cartoon characters. Because Brendan Fraser, he's not a character himself. And that's the biggest flaw of that film. About both Space Jam and this movie is that he's not a character. All the human, like he, like the main two human leads that we follow, they're not really character. They're there to react to everyone, and then all the other human characters, they're like we have to be even bigger, more exaggerated than the actual cartoons that we're going up against, and it feels awful. It feels so inauthentic. And I'll tell you some of the the, the, the actors that do that. Jeff, fucking Steve Martin. This might be one of his worst performances I've ever seen in my life. He's absolutely atrocious in this film but i'll tell you we'll get into it chap but i gotta ask you first how many of you have seen looney tunes back colon back in action chap and do you like it do you dislike it i'm really curious about this you know for those of you who like it hey that that's that's i'm not taking that i'm never taking that away from you but for me personally oof this is a hard watch i laser never seen it mm-hmm mm -hmm. uh austin's better than space jam see i haven't seen space jam in so long i can't even tell you Maybe. I don't know. I just don't know. I don't know. I know it's not good as Rod, Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Certainly that. Dark Slayer's seen it. It's a guilty pleasure of mine. Mm-hmm. Also, there are parts of it I like. Ro, love this movie, but I agree. It's bad, but it's also fun. Mark, uh, Roger Rabbit is great. Absolutely agree. Yes, it is, to me, a classic. That should be looked upon by many people uh, who, who would like to do uh, uh, live-action 
slash animation hybrid films because I don't think anyone's been able to do it right or at least as good as Who Framed Roger Rabbit. It's just to be served as an example as the premier uh, type of film. Mm. Also, it ain't no Roger Rabbit. That's certainly the ingenuity. Happy to hear you're doing fine. Grilled it. Oh, nice ingenuity. Good to hear that. I'm glad you're grilling. Yeah, hope everyone's having, let me say this chat. Hope everyone's having a very nice Memorial Day uh, uh, weekend right now. Hope you enjoyed your Monday. Hope you spent it relaxing. Take it easier if you're your family or your friends. Or if you're not spending time, then at least you just took some time for yourself because that's just as important, chat. Brave Mango, welcome to you. Just saw, uh, saw you. Thankfully avoided. Nice, nice. I agree. I think that's probably the best one. Is it Cool World? No. I mean, Cool World is fucking boring. Uh, cool World. I, I'm not, I don't like that movie at all. I couldn't even tell you. Raw, I'm just uh, big when it comes to good voice direction, back in action, have that. I mean, I'll tell you this right now. I mean, the voice, a the voice acting for the characters like Bugs Bunny, Daffy Duck, and, you know, Marvin the Martian, Elmer Fudd. I mean, that's so fun. You'll, you'll, you'll send me Sam uh, chat. Like, they're always good. They're, like, they're never not good to me, you know, but it's just the the premise of the film and the other, I think, just live-action characters that just make it, at least for me, a really hard watch. Yo, Smitty, you have a gifted sub to switch the station. Thank you so much, Yo, Smitty. That was very, very kind of you. Yeah, you have been so generous this stream, man. Thank you. Raising my glass to you again. Mm. Yeah, we can get just get into it. Oh, Red Batcher, welcome to the stream. I uh, hope you change your mind someday about that Ass Creed Origins and Odyssey. I watched the show a bit and you didn't like it. And you said you didn't like it because of the side quests. But to be honest, the side quests are really engaging. Maybe I will. Maybe I'll stream it someday. I'll definitely be streaming Valhalla in the future when that eventually comes out. Um, but maybe I'll give it another shot. I just don't like a big open world with so much busy work. Um, but maybe I, can, maybe I can avoid some of that and plan out. It's like, okay, I'm going to do these side quests and ignore the rest of that stuff. Maybe I'll stream them someday. And they're not on the docket right now. But definitely Valhalla. Definitely the Valhalla. So they should think, oh, yeah, no, you know, it's very kind of Yellow Smitty to gift you, so. Thank you again, Yellow Smitty. But now, chat, let's go ahead and get into the nitty-gritty of this film. Uh, this also, this this movie, chat, uh, killed Warner Brothers' uh, feature animation. That was a specific division at Warner Brothers uh, because this film was a box office bomb for them. Uh, and also, it was, it was a, it got very mixed. I mean, it got mixed to positive reviews. That's what they say on Wikipedia at the very least. Um, yeah, but this had a budget of about $80 million chat in a box office of 68.5 worldwide. So this was not a hit. That's what uh, shuttered that specific division of Warner Brothers. Like, okay, we can't do this anymore. And that's why we don't really see a lot of the classic Looney Tunes characters in feature films. You know, that's why they're kind of relegated to just, uh, on television right now. Or now that they're releasing that new Looney Tunes show. On HBO Max, so I've seen the clips of that. looks That looks really good, and they're kind of harkening back to the days of the, the older Looney Tunes cartoons, like from the '40s and the '50s and the '60s. So I'm loving everything I'm seeing there. But like what they have here, that I'm just not a fan, chat. But we're gonna get into the nitty gritty, and chat. We are opening to like, oh, it's a it's a new rendition of the classic uh, Bugs Bunny and Daffy Duck cartoon chat. They're going up against uh, Elmer Fudd right now, and he's hunting. He's hunting wabbits. Well, obviously because Daffy Duck, even though it's duck season, chat, he's nailing a new sign underneath it saying it's actually wabbit season right now. Not duck season, wabbit season. And, you know, fucking Elmer Fudd, he comes across uh, Daffy, and Daffy's like, listen, you're going to want to hunt some goddamn wabbits. It's no longer duck season. Elmer Fudd's like, oh, wheelie. Yes, yes, wheelie. And fucking Bugs Bunny, he comes strolling up, chat, what's up, Doc? And then Daffy, ooh, Daffy hates that Bugs Bunny. And then... Bugs Bunny, he's just telling me, like, listen, Alma, it's not, it's not, you know, uh, rabbit season, it's actually duck season. And Daffy goes, no, it's rabbit season, duck season, rabbit season, duck season, until they do the reverse chat, until Bugs Bunny says, rabbit season. And then Daffy, this is good, this is good, this is good picture, he says, duck season, and grabs Elmer Fudd's fucking, I mean, just his, his goddamn two-barrel shotgun chat, puts it right in his beak, and says, fire! And he fucking gets his brains blown out the back of his head, chat, eyes just, it just pop, and Daffy is dead, chat. And that's, that's Louis Toons back in action. You see the death of Daffy Duck. And then Bob Hoskins, old Bob Hoskins, he comes walking on the set. It's like, I gotta solve a murder. And fucking Bugs Bunny, he's on the run. That doesn't happen, Chad. That's what I wanted this to be. I think that'd be really interesting. But no, fucking gun glass, beak spins around his head, all that kind of thing. And then, Chad, we cut to a boardroom. And Daffy's like, listen, I've been doing this shit for 60 goddamn years, okay? I want to be the lead, all right? I'm, I'm, I'm tired of being second banana, second bill. 
to that goddamn rabbit. And, you know, the Warner Brothers, Chad, who are actually they're the head of the company, that's the two Warner Brothers. You know, like, this is directed by this is directed by Joe Dante, by the way. And he always uses the same actors. These two brothers, Chad, are also the two weird, fucked up pedophile brothers from the Gremlins 2, the new batch. Same guys. And he has it there. They're the head of the company, Chad. And they're like, well, Daffy, the, the fucking, you know, the, the people love it when you get shot in the face. He's like, but I don't want to get shot in the face anymore, okay? He, all Bugs has to do is eat a carrot and say a little catchphrase and people love him. Like, I want to be the goddamn hero. I want to get top villain, okay? And he's saying this to all the people. And if you don't, if you don't give me what I want, I'll quit. And chat we're introduced to a new character she's a, an executive her name is kate i believe her name is kate if it's not i apologize that's her name right now and she says well mr duck like that's just the way it is okay and if you're gonna keep acting that way then you're fired and Davy's like why quit and it's like holy shit Davy duck is quitting warner Bros. animation well i'll see what happens here ultimate dark star thank with the five biddies i want top villain damn it i mean i get it because it's got a bill as a duck so like, yeah, it's funny it's a pun. <laughs> so he's quitting, chat. He's just like, I don't give a damn. Uh, and then fucking Bugs Bunny walks in the room. Chase like, Daffy, Daffy, just listen. Just calm down a bit. You know, you, we, we go through this all the time. It's okay. But like, Bugs is actually trying to appeal to the, the Daffy's better nature. It's like, I, get, I, get, I understand why you're, you're angry. You've been doing this for 60 goddamn years, okay? We can work something out and everything. Daffy's like, he's trying to calm down a little bit. But then the fucking Kate, the executive, she's like, you know what, Daffy? We don't need your shit anymore, okay? According to these statistics, Bugs, he he's popular among, you know, goddamn uh, 10 to 20 year olds. Uh, uh, fucking 30 to 50 year olds. Like, you you know who you're popping with, Daffy? Some morbid, obese, basement dweller. That's what they actually use, chat. Basement dweller people. And he's like, but I have other appeal. Come on. He's like, no. Get out of here. And it's like, Jesus. Daffy's like, oh, God, what have I done? <laughs> Purple Canary, welcome to the stream. And thank you for the 10 biddies. You're despicable. He's just crying, Chase. He's crying at this point. Like, I, he just ruined his career. Bugs is like, all right, come on. Let's all calm down, guys. Let's, well, I, like, listen, I need him for these shorts. We need each other. We've been doing this for a long time. Temper sometimes flare, but fucking Kate, she puts her goddamn heels down, Chad. She says, no, Mr. Bunny. Get that motherfucker out of here. And so, Chad, who does, uh, who, she starts to call security. She's like, we need to get rid of this goddamn duck. And, you know, she takes him by the hand. He's just crying, Chet. And then who do we see next in the next scene, Chet? Fucking Brendan Fraser. And he just bursts in, and he's doing the action bit, Chet. It's like, ah, it's like Brendan Fraser from the money, at the, from the mummy, Chet. Action epic. And, you know, but he's not actually Brendan Fraser, Chet. His name is DJ. He's DJ the security guard, and he's trying out for some stunt work right now. But he fucking flops, Chad. He, it's a terrible performance. He ap he does the absolutely wrong thing that uh, that uh, the stunt man's supposed to do. Makes a fool of himself. They're like, get your ass out of here and put on the goddamn uniform. Get out there and protect the Warner lot. So he's disappointing himself, Chad. He gets the call from Kate. Hey, we got a uh, you know a pretty um overzealous star here that needs to be uh, uh, put out on the curb. And so. He's like, okay, I'll be right over there. He comes over there to chat, and he sees Kate, and he's like, are you, that's fucking Daffy Duck. You want me to kick Daffy Duck out of one of those? She's like, goddamn right I do. And Bugs is like, listen, I, I do, let's not do this. <laughs> Can we not do this? And Bugs is trying. He's trying to be the mediator in this situation, chat, but no one's listening to poor old Bugs Bunny. It's like, Bugs, shut the fuck up. Look pretty, eat your goddamn carrots. Okay, Kate's like, Jesus. <laughs> oh, my God. And so... Davy, he doesn't want to leave. And so he just fucking gets out of Kate's grip chat. He just goes off. And Brendan Fraser's like, God damn it, I now have to chase after one of Warner Brothers' premier stars, chat. And so he proceeds to run across the Warner Brothers lot. And we get various fucking scenes of them just showcasing all the franchises that Warner Brothers owns. Daffy Ducks takes control of the Batmobile. They go through the... Um, uh, sets to like other Warner Brothers uh, projects, other cartoons that you've seen. She had to smashing through them all. Daffy just running a goddamn muck. Brendan Fraser trying something. He manages, he does manage to get a hold of Daffy Duck, chat. He does manage to get a hold of Daffy Duck, just squeezing the shit out of him. But Daffy, he fucks something with the water tower and stuff. So even though Brendan Fraser, he brings back Daffy Duck 
to Kate. He says, here, I got him. Kate, she's, she's driving her nice car, Chad. I'm going to say it's a Mercedes-Benz. I don't know if it was a Mercedes-Benz, but I'm going to say it was a Mercedes-Benz. Fucking Daffy Duck, he's in the he's in the passenger seat, Chad. And Brenda, he's like, here, I got him. But Chad, we see the water tower behind him. And this thing's about to come down and kill everybody. And it's fucking crashing down. And Kate's like, ah, oh, jeez. I mean, you know, <laughs> Bugs Bunny pulls up this little umbrella. He's like, okay, I'm ready. And, of course, this thing crashes on him, Chad. They're all dead. They're not dead. But this huge tidal wave of water envelops them. Completely just ruins Kate's car, Chad. Bugs Bunny, he's just doing laps in the backseat. He's having a good time. Daffy, he might as well be dead because he knows his career is over. And Kate's blah, blah, just trying to get all the water out of her face, Chad. Make a run down. She says, you're Fired, Brendan Fraser. He's like, oh man. Now, chat. Very important. Brendan Fraser. He might be a security guard, but he's also the son. He is the son of the wealthiest actor in Hollywood, who also happens to be Timothy Dalton. Timothy Dalton. Uh, he is the star of the popular uh, uh, spy franchise, not James Bond. I don't know what the fuck they call him in this movie, but he's like in a spy franchise. Dark Slayer, thank you so much for the five biddies. The Stizzy Man. I'm doing very well. I'm, I'm recounting the tale of Looney Tunes back in action. That's what I'm doing right now. Fucking Brendan Fraser fired. Daffy Duck fired. Kate, man. That's what we got so far, chat. And so he's like, shit, I, got, I just got to go. So he, um, oh, also his boss is, uh, okay, what's the actor's name? You've seen this actor before, chat. Oh, it's driving me crazy. Oh. What the hell is his name? Oh, Roger Corman's in this. That's kind of funny. Oh, it's the guy. It's the guy from uh, Gremlins. He's always in Joe Dante films. You know what I'm talking about? You've seen him before. Oh, this is absolutely driving me crazy. God damn it! Well, that guy's in the movie chat. Plays the fucking uh, neighbor who uh, gets steamrolled by the Gremlins in one, but then he comes back alive and two is like, no, 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 no. He died in that movie. Don't do some retconning, Joe Dante, just because he's your friend. And he's like the, the head of the security guard office chat, and uh, he's very upset. And he fucking just rips the badge off of uh, uh, Brendan Fraser, and he's like, your father would be so disappointed. And he spits in his face. He's like, you shouldn't spit in someone's face, chat. Dick Miller. That's it, Flimmy Flam. That's it, Dick Miller. And so Dick Miller just, bah, just spits in his face, chat, rips off the badge, takes his pants, all that stuff. He's like, don't do that. Uh, and then, you know, I noticed that Dick Miller, this, he's very old here because he's, he has on this little, like, little step stool and he kind of almost falls back and a guy catches him though. I was like, oh, I kinda, that was kind of weird. And, you know, I was like, hmm, why do you have him doing these kind of movies if he's so old? You know, to think of his health. Anyway, chat. And Brendan Fraser, he just fucking, he just go, goes home at this point. He's like, I got nothing left. And he goes, man, first of all, I don't know why you're so goddamn sad, Brandon Frazier. Because he's always under his father's shadow. I get it. But you can do so much more. Why be a security guard, okay, at the Warner Brothers lot? Like, have your dad listen. Not the, nepotism is, like, nepotism exists, chat. That's just the way it's going to be, okay? You use some of that nepotism to get your, you know, get a better job at Warner Brothers. Why you got to be a security guard? Because he just want to be on the shadow of his father. Whatever. He wants, to, he wants to make it on his own mare. Who cares? Thunder Lee, welcome to the stream. Thank you for the 10 minis. Hope you're doing very well today. Uh, funny that. No, at the end of Grandma's, if you listen to the radio, they mentioned he was in the hospital. Oh, I did not know that. I did not listen to the radio at the end of Gremlins. So there you go. All right, fair enough, Flimmy Flam. Fair enough. Oh, Joe Dante, he covered his bases. <laughs> so he goes, you know, Brendan Fraser, he goes home. He's just so sad, chat. Uh, and he's, he's pulling up to his garage, parks his shit car, and then who does he see who are his neighbors, Chad? Granny! It's the, the granny from the, the Warner Brothers cartoons, and Tweety's there, and Sylvester's trying to murder Tweety like typical Chad. Granny's just like, oh, Brendan Fraser, you're wonderful. Like, she cares about him, Chad. She's like, don't worry, I heard you got fired, don't worry. Think, good things always happen to good people, and you're a good person. Brendan Fraser's like, you know what, I really needed that, uh, Granny. Thank you so much. She's like, don't worry about it. And she just fucking cuts off Sylvester's tail. And he's like, ah! He's screaming, Chad, there's blood everywhere. And then he walks into his home, Chad. He's a this fuck, just amazing, opulent mansion. This looks a good place. But then, Chad, who's fucking in his little pocket pulling some shenanigans? It's Daffy Duck! Daffy is there, and he's just there to make Brendan Fraser's life miserable. He's like, get the fuck out of here, Daffy. He's like, listen, Brendan Fraser, I need your help. I just need to get employed again at Warner Brothers. If you can help me out. I was like, I want nothing to do with you, okay? You're the reason I was fired. Fuck you, you're a prick. And Daffy Duck's like, I knew you loved me. It's like, you're not listening, you idiot. So again... Bit of a bit of an antagonistic relationship between Brendan Fraser and Daffy Duck, chat. But then, uh, after all this is happening, chat, this is weird. I mean, the plot just, like, things just happen for the sake of happening. 
Uh, and suddenly, Brendan Fraser's, or I guess his dad's uh, remote control for his television starts ringing. And he's like, okay. And he picks up the, re the, the fucking, you know, remote control. And he's like, hello? And Chad, all of a sudden, the TV turns on. And it's Timothy Dalton. He's like, Brendan Fraser, my son. You know, you look nothing like each other, but you look like your mother, I guess. But I need your help. I'm an actual spy. I'm not just a movie star. I'm an actual spy. My movies are just cover. And I'm involved in a secret operation, okay? And he's doing this scene. He's just fighting off bad guys, Chad. Kung fu chopping and shit. Just, God, ah, just snapping people's necks. And he says, listen, I need you to go to las vegas okay and i need you to find the the queen of diamonds it's a card find the queen of diamonds at yo 70 sam's casino find it okay and he's like dad i don't know what the hell you're talking he's like don't i need your help and then he fucking gets the feed gets cut off Chad, because timothy dalton he becomes an, uh, embroiled in another battle for his life and brandon frazier's like i'm very confused davy's like uh let's fucking go to vegas that sounds good to me I, I like that plan. I like that plan. Also, I think they mentioned that, oh, yeah, you need to get the Queen of Diamonds because that will lead you to the Blue Monkey Chat. And it's this huge diamond. And Davy Duck says, fucking diamond? Oh, I can use that for money. And Davy's a greedy little son of a bitch, Chat. So it's like, hey, let's all go to Las Vegas. Timmy Dalton also says during the whole fighting sequence, take my super secret spy cards parked in the garage. And he's like, sounds good to me. And Chat... Fucking Brenda Frazier, Daffy Duck, they hop in the car, and it's, but it's not, it's, it looks like an ordinary, look at a shit, you know, shitty car, he's like, is this a spy car, Daffy's like, I don't think it's a spy car, Brenda Frazier's like, don't worry about it, Daffy, it's fine, and then they drive off to Viva Las Vegas, chat, but then, when the garage doors close, the garage inverts, chat, reverses, and then we see the actual spy car, it's like, oh, that's a spy car, okay, oh, and then, chat, after that, we cut, and this is the part of the movie, I'm like, I don't give a fuck anymore, this is when I just started to despise the entire film. We cut to the evil lair of Acme, chat. Uh, which, of course, is the company that is seen throughout all the classic Warner Brothers cartoons. They create all the nefarious inventions that, like, Wile E. Coyote buys or Daffy buys. You know, it's all, the, all the goofy stuff. And we meet the head of the Acme company, chat, and it's Steve Martin. And my God. I, it's like I, you know, you 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 think oh the goofiest this movie can get is like the shenanigans of Bugs Bunny, Daffy Duck, Marvin the Martian, you know Taz the Tasmanian Devil, like but no chat it's Steve Martin and when I say I mean oh, he attempts to be a cartoon chat but he just comes off as the most grating annoying character possible. He's dressed in like this suit but he has like you know fucking uh uh like khaki shorts on chat like dress shorts on he's got sneakers on he's got there's Nicholas haircut there's Nicholas glasses and he's constantly like thrusting towards the camera it's like, i want to see if steve martin thrust at me in a little like child's uh a uh, uh, boy suit chat no thank you and he is absolutely horrendous in this like I'll, I'll admit i am just not a big steve martin fan i really don't understand why why people think he's so funny like the only other role I can possibly think of that I was like, you know what, this this is I, this is enjoyable is the jerk. But other than that, I think I just I just don't see why people think he's so talented. I just don't get it. And like this this is evidence enough. This this makes the fucking Pick Panther films that he did, which is our travesty against the original uh, Peter Sellers movies, chat, uh, look like gold. And he's the he's like I want the blue monkey and. I will uh, uh, get to it as much. I mean, it's all fucking shenanigans, Chad. It's like everything is a joke, and you have all these other actors surrounding him. And just we're just gonna have to react to whatever he does. I, we we don't know. You got Ron Perlman's there for like five minutes, Chad. He dies in a really comedic way. He gets turned to a skeleton at one point, and they're all there just to react to Steve Martin. They're not given any lines, and it's just like okay, we'll we'll try to do this. But he is absolutely terrible. Like I, I I'm sorry. I, you know, people who like this performance, I mean, good for you, but Jesus Christ. And he's like, I want the blue monkey. He's torturing Timothy Dalton. He, you know, he's always tuning in and like, how is the torture going? And Timothy Dalton, he's kicking all these guys' asses, chat, during the whole time. And I'm like, it's going great, boss. He's like, I will soon get the blue monkey. So he's very excited about it, chat. Then 
I, I want to spend as uh, as uh, least amount of time with Steve Martin as I possibly can. Because then, chat, we cut back to the Hollywood Hills. And we're having, and then Bugs Bunny and Kate, they're having a meeting. Also, we get like a, a whole bunch of little cameos of other characters. Chad Porky Pig, he's complaining that everyone wants to be so g -g 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 goddamn PC nowadays. And he's talking to Speedy Gonzalez. He's like, yeah, tell me about it because you don't see Speedy Gonzalez in anything anymore. So I thought that was a funny joke. That was a, that was a funny joke. And then we also get a scene between Scooby-Doo uh uh shaggy and matthew lillard and they're mad at matthew lillard because they didn't think he did a good performance in scooby the the, the live action scooby-doo movie he's like okay that's kind of fun like this this is the best scene in the movie those, those two parts and then we move on to fucking uh kate and bugs bunny and bugs he's just trying to explain to kate he's like listen i i really we even we even need to get back to daffy okay because i don't just i just don't think these scripts are going to work without him okay and he was like I, he's he's my yin to my yang okay we need him she's like don't worry about it, okay we just got to hit all these specific demographics your your, your popularity is going to skyrocket he's like i don't understand all that i've been doing this for 60 goddamn years toots i know what i'm talking about she says that's sexist mr bunny but this is pre this is pre-hashtag me too. So I'll let you off this one time. He's like, okay. And then shall we cut to one of the cartoons? Uh, but but it's, da it's Daffy Duckless. And Bugs just doesn't know what to do. He's like, he needs Daffy with him. Chat the cat the cartoon. It's they have the dailies for the cartoon. Everyone hates it. They're throwing fucking food at the screen like it's terrible. And the Warner Brothers chat, they're telling Kate, you're fired. And she's like, what? It's my butt. Oh, well, listen, I can get back the duck. I can get back Daffy. And they're like, okay, you get Daffy Duck back by Monday, and we'll give you back your job. She's like, great. I'm just gonna go find Brendan Fraser because she was the last. He was the last one that saw Daffy Duck. Let's do it. And then her and Bugs Bunny they team up, Chad, and they go to Brendan Fraser's house. And that's when she realizes, oh, he's the son of Timothy Dalton, the greatest actor in the world. And she's like, I really fucked up. I fired the son of the greatest actor in the world who is like our premier star for our live action films. And Bugs Bunny's like, yeah, you did fuck up. Also, there, again, there's various gags because um, she finds Bugs uh, taking a shower in uh, Brendan Fraser's uh, home. She opens up the curtain and cuts the black and white into like a parody of Psycho. It's just like, I, I don't, I don't, I don't need, I don't need this. <laughs> it's, it's those kind of parodies that just come across so unfunny. But that fucking happens uh then you know she realizes like oh shit because she finds some stuff chat uh where she like realizes oh timothy dalton he's a goddamn super spy and but you know, through the super spy stuff i'll be able to find daffy duck they get into the actual super spy car chat and they head to viva las vegas they're heading in the direction uh and i think uh where we go oh yeah oh so then chat we finally get to uh to viva las vegas and uh, Brendan Fraser and Daffy Duck, they're having a good old time, chap. But, but Monkey Brendan Fraser, he's like only concerned about his dad. Daffy doesn't give a shit about his dad. He's like, I want the blue monkey. That's all I care about. And they go to the old 70 Sam's uh, Casino, chap. And they go in there. And uh, uh, again, fucking shenanigans. You know, there's, there's parodies of various casino movies and stuff. It doesn't matter. Eventually, oh yeah, because Timothy Dalton tells Brendan Fraser, okay, you gotta meet with my... Uh, my contact, she'll give you the card that you'll need to find the blue monkey. And he's like, that's good. And he says, gotta find Dusty Trails, okay? She's a performer for Yosemite Sam. So you just go do that. You'll be golden. You, you, and you'll know what the next location. And she's like, cool. Um, also, chat, we cut to another scene of actually Yosemite Sam. He's getting orders from Steve Martin. And Steve Martin's telling him, like, listen, Fucking Brendan Fraser, he's going to be coming. So you got to kill him for me, you know, Sammy Sam. So he says, like, yes, sir. He's going to send out his boys and they take down Brendan Fraser and Daffy Duck. And that's what we're going to be doing, chat. But then, Brendan Fraser, he does come upon Dusty Trails, chat. She is doing a performance. And fucking Brendan Fraser has no salty because he's just like, hey, in the middle of the performance, chat, like, hey, I, I need the, the thing, the card. The, the queen of uh, diamonds. She's like, what the fuck are you doing? I'm performing. But then we get a goofy bit uh, when Brendan F uh, Fraser kills a dwarf man and he wears the dwarf man's costume on stage and he tries to engage with uh, 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 Dusty Trails ship. And we don't find the dwarf man's body later. I assume he is dead. He is lining the walls of Yosemite Sam's casino chat forever. Still rotting there to this day. And eventually they finish the performance. And Dusty Trails, she reveals that she too, she too is a super spy, and she gives the card to Brennan Fraser. I don't know what happens to Dusty Trails at this point. I think she dies. I, I don't think we see her again. I, I believe 
Yosemite Sam or her or his boys murdered her at some point, and we never see her again. She probably shares the same crawl space as the dwarf man that Brendan Fraser killed five minutes ago. So that's what I assume. And that's what happened. So they got the car chat, and then we get into the protracted battle uh, with Yosemite Sam and the, the goons. And Brendan Fraser, he proves this, his capabilities as an action star here, Chad, as a, as a potential super spy. Because he beats the shit out of Yosemite Sam's boys, Chad, just kicking all their asses. Um, beats the shit out of Yosemite Sam. But now it's time to, for, for them to get going. And, like, Daffy and uh, 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 Brendan Fraser are like, who do we, wh where are we going to go? And then who rolls up, Chad? Kate and Daffy Duck. And they all pile in, Chad. Like, okay, I got the card. Here's the duck. Everything's working out. And then we get a, uh, uh, a chase scene, Chad. In the middle of Las Vegas, Yosemite Sam, he steals a notable sports star. I believe a notable NASCAR star's car, Chad. And him and his boys pile in. Then we get a, we get a, 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 a chase scene here. Stupid. Doesn't make any sense. At one point, fuck it. Eventually, U-70 Sam, he crashes the car into the casino chat. His two guys, just they just die. They, they blow up with the car. U-70 Sam, he he somehow falls into his, his collection of TNT, and he blows himself up. Also, Brendan Fraser, since it's a spy car chat, can fly, you know, typical. And he activates it. And it's like, okay, let's start flying. They start flying, Chad, and they see Yosemite Sam's just completely disemboweled and on fire corpse flying above them, Chad. It's like, oh, it's a great moment. He, Yosemite Sam, he's dead. And the car is just, just flying. Brent Fraser's like, oh, my God, mother of God, what are we going to do? And the computer says, mother going to mother. And the car just starts flying in this direction, Chad, like 10 miles. Like, we'll be there in, like, 10 minutes or 10 miles. And he's like, that's weird. And then... He's fucking, he's like, I'm going to take back control. And he takes back control, Chad. But as soon as he does that, he fucking fucks it up. And the car just starts plumbing towards the ground. And it's like, it almost hits the ground. It's like a foot away from the ground. It's like, oh, they're almost going to die. But it stops. And the car says, you run out of fuel, you dingus. And Kate's like, but how is that possible? If it ran out of fuel, we still hit the ground. And then it hits the ground, Chad, and they all die. They don't die. Everyone's fine. But Bugs is like, why the fuck did you say that? <laughs> and so now they're stranded in the middle of uh, the Nevada desert chat and we're getting a bit of a heart-to-heart -heart kind of situation Brendan Fraser he's talking to Kate and he's just like I just want to find my dad Kate's just I just want to have my job back you know uh Daffy says I just want to have my want to have my job back and also some respect and Bugs he's like I want to leave all of you here to die I don't like any of you I'm exaggerating a little bit Chad because I have to <laughs> Bugs Head literally has very little to do in this movie. It's kind of Brendan Fraser and Daffy Duck's film, Chad. Bugs is just like, I'm going to come potentially come in there, say a sarcastic thing, I'm going to back the fuck out. Jeff Gordon, that's who it is. Oh, notable NASCAR driver Jeff Gordon, Chad. Um, and, you know, Brendan Fraser, I fucking him and Kate have a moment or whatever, and they go to sleep. And Daffy's just like, you know, Bugs, all you got to do is eat a carrot and say a one-liner. People love you. Like, I have to, like, physically, you know, almost be near death to get a chuckle out of somebody. And, you know, then Daffy's like, good night. And he goes to sleep. And, you know, Bugsy's like, you know what? Oh, man, that's kind of true. I feel kind of shitty. I, I, and it kind of goes in the fact, like, Bugs kind of takes advantage of Daffy. Daffy brings him himself many times. But there's no doubt that Bugs does take advantage of Daffy. I, I like that acknowledgement in the film, chat. And so then uh, th th there's another Steve Martin scene. Uh, oh, yeah, we got another Steve Martin scene, chat. Here it is. Uh, where he's like, okay, fucking Yosemite Sam failed me. I, we must go after our special operative Coyote to take him down, to assassinate them. And who's Coyote, Chet? Well, it's Wiley Coyote, of course, who's always chasing after that roadrunner, Chet. He's like, listen, uh, Wiley, I'm going to give you the most advanced acne technology possible, and you're going to kill him for me. He goes, yes, sir. And so, Chet, this next day, it's morning. They're walking the goddamn desert. Oh, uh, Coyote, he gets all these... um rocket systems and shit and of course they don't work they blow up in his face as typical because it's acme technology chad never works and so coyote he's he's not they don't even know he exists <laughs> they don't even know he, he he's not even established as a threat to them and then she has to report back to uh steve martin says yeah yeah i fucked up i'm sorry man steve martin's like don't worry about it and then you do another comedic bit which is just atrocious absolutely atrocious where is steve martin's like you know oh, do you know what just go ahead and take a shower he walks away. But be mindful of the TNT in your explosion. And be mindful of the fireworks in your another explosion. Also, be mindful of the plate glass. And then he, fuck, you see Wiley Coney, like, die. Because he went through a plate glass window. And it's just like, ugh. It's, it's really bad. Ron Perlman isn't in Mr. Yasmin. We see, we see, uh, he dies in this as well. 
I think someone kills him. Was it Marvin? No, I forget what it is. I think maybe it's, I, I forget if it's Taz. No, it's Taz, I think, that kills him. Taz, like, farts on him and it causes a chain reaction explosion. He's burned to death. I don't know. Um, Taz is the last of the of the big guys they have. Like, go ahead and kill some people. Oh, Dark Star, thank you for the five biddies. Can you imagine uh, Acme designed military hardware? I did, man. It's, they're not good at it. <laughs> they're really bad. Always up in someone's face. And so eventually, Chad, we cut back to... um. Our four intrepid heroes, our quartet, if you will, chat. And Brandon Fraser's like, listen, guys, uh, fucking Vegas is that way. I'm just going to go this way. That's the direction that the car told me to go in. So see you later. And they're like, you're just going to walk in the desert? He's like, yeah, I'm just going to walk in the desert, chat. And then he st takes one step in, a, in the opposite direction, and he's fu he fucking vanishes. They're like, what the hell just happened? Where'd he go? And they're like, and then he pops out. It's like a force field, Chad, like an invisible force field. He's like, hey, guys, come inside. There's air conditioning. And he drags them all in, Chad. And all these alarms start blared. He could have told us before about the alarms, Brendan Fraser. And then they're attacked by a giant hentai monster. It's like, what the hell is this cartoon about? And all these security guards start running in, Chad. They just start fucking zapping the thing. Just like, ah, I'm just trying to, like, we had to, like, cattle prod, Chad. Just torturing this poor defenseless hentai creature. Eventually, they put it into a giant bottle. I don't know why it's a bottle. It's a little, like, giant soda bottle, and it's in there. And who fucking walks out, Chad? It's a scientist lady. And she says, my name is Mother. It's like, Mother, oh. That's what the car was going to. The car was going to you. She's like, yes, I am basically the cue to Timothy Dalton's uh, Bond right now again, because he was formerly known as James Bond. Okay, never mind. Um, so I'm here to help you out, Brendan Fraser. I know you, you were the son of Timothy Dolly. He's like, yes, I am. We could use your help. She's like, great. And while they're all doing this chat, they're showcasing all the old, all the properties that Wonder Brothers owns in here. You see some uh, references to like really some really bad sci-fi films that Wonder Brothers produced back in the day, like Robot Monster and a couple of other movies. All, all those creatures inside you see, they're all kept in giant soda bottles for some reason. We see Marvin the Martian chat. He's like, motherfucker, I can't believe I'm stuck in here. He's very upset. And so, and this character, I forget this actress who plays uh, this doctor, but she is, Joe, it's Joan Cusack. It's Joan Cusack, chat. Sister of John Cusack. And they really don't, her whole role is just be weird for the sake of being weird. And none of it's funny. All of it falls flat. Because they're like asking, it's like, oh, is this, is this one of her jokes, chat? They're like, Brent Frazier and like all the other characters, like, is this Area 51? She goes, no, 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 it's not Area 51. No, no. We, we put out the idea, the name Area 51, to throw all the crazies and Looney Tunes. Get it, Looney Tunes, chat? Ah, uh, ah, uh, no, no. This, this, my friends, is Area 52. Oh, so funny. So goddamn funny. And she gets various other things. I think it's where she explains the... the uh, she, now she explains the, the, the blue diamond monkey thing. The blue monkey diamond. And she says, oh yeah, so this is Steve Martin's evil plan. Um, he wants to take the blue diamond monkey, or the blue, uh, blue monkey diamond, uh, because the blue mo monkey diamond has a special power. It will literally turn people... In, they say blue monkeys, but it doesn't. It just turns into monkeys. And so what he'll do is he'll change the entire population of the planet into monkeys... So they will then create Acme products and then he'll reverse the blue uh, monkey diamond effect. So then people will then buy those products and, you know, fucking Acme can fill their coffers. And he'll repeat the process again and again and again and again. And I was like, like, well, that's dumb, but I just want to rescue my dad. And she goes, no problem. I'll help you, sir. Ooh, awesome. Take the 10 minutes. You forgot the Desert Walmart, which has great product, uh, great products, is low, low, low price. I did, I did, Austin, for good reason. <laughs> so like Doctor Evil plan. Doctor Evil's more competent, than fucking Steve Martin. Doctor Evil was uh, funny and tolerable at the very least. Like you, funny to the very least, tolerable. Chat. Steve Martin is just atrocious in this film. And every time we cut back to him, like I can't remember scenes of him just because I, I don't want to remember them. He's always thrusting, he's always yelling, because nothing's funnier when somebody's just screeching at you the entire time, and not in, like, repeating jokes. They're not even jokes, there's references to things. References to the products that exist at, at, in, in, the, in the year of 2003. It's the type of humor I absolutely despise. Honestly, we need to rate everything to do. Maybe we should. Maybe we should. Oh, no, you can't anymore, because, chat... I'm actually glad you pointed that off, Snake. I'm glad you brought that up because fucking Steve Martin was, I got a fucking sleeper agent 
in Area 52 right now. Let me call up chat. It's Marvin the Martian who we just saw. Marvin's like, what'd you need, boss? He's like, I need you to, like, kill everyone in there. He goes, fucking yes, sir. He, he, they didn't take his weapons off of him in chat. Marvin the Martian. He pulls out his little laser gun. Fucking you know, shoots the glass, he gets out of there, he frees all the other hentai monster chat, and they just proceed to kill everyone in the facility. Like, no if, ands, or buts about it. Like, everyone's dying. They kill Joan Cusack, is torn in half uh, by one of the hentai creatures. They got the Daleks chat, they're frying everybody. I think at one point, like, a Daffy Duck, he gets fried, but they put him back together again, it doesn't matter. Uh, and like, remember, like, we gotta skedaddle. And so they skedaddle out of their chat, they get, they get like, he gets like inventions and shit that is like spy tools that his father had and everything. And it's like, okay, that's cool. Um, they got, uh, also, uh, they, uh, we, they find out by, from, from Joan Cusack that you have to go to Paris. You got to go to the, uh, the, the Mona Lisa and then everything shall be revealed. And he's like, whoa, okay. Everything shall be revealed. And so they go there, chat. Uh, oh, they, they leave the facility as everyone's getting killed. And, oh, this is so stupid. And then he's like, well, how the fuck are we going to get to Paris? That's on the other side of the world. And Bugs Bunny goes, don't worry about it. I'm just going to, <laughs> I'm just going to transport us there. Because he just takes the little, little meta humor chat. He just takes the edge of the screen and rips it off. And we're now in Paris. We are just instantly transported to Paris because just like, listen, we have a limited amount of time. This is an hour and 27 minute movie, okay? We can't have a scene of everyone fucking flying on a plane. We don't need a scene of people buying tickets, okay? I near it'll take too long. We're just going to rip the fucking film to shreds. And we're now in Paris, chat. And they're in the museum they need to be in. And, and they're like, okay, here we are at the Mona Lisa. And like, we got to take it. And Bugs Bunny and Daffy Duck, like, they're ready to steal it, chat. They've transformed into their burglar clothes. They're like, we can't, we don't, can't steal the Mona Lisa. Yeah, you idiots. And then they're like, well, but he's, but the, Joan Cusack said, it's like, we'll be able to see what's on the Mona Lisa with the Queen of Diamonds. He's like, I don't get it. But, ah, he figures it out, chat. Because he peels back the car, he peels like uh, the, the Queen of Diamonds in two. And it's like a little secret, like video, like a uh, find a thingy with, a, with like a see-through image. He, oh, he looks into it, chat. And he sees like, oh, it's it, behind the Mona Lisa is a map of Africa. And that's where the blue monkey diamond must be. Oh perfect makes complete sense and daddy's just obsessed with like i want to take a picture because like let's take a picture of our cell phone nokia and um then we'll know exactly where we need to go and daddy's like i want to take the picture like why do you want to take a fucking picture daffy why also there's like a a lot of references to game boys at the time because you know this is the game boy era chat people love their game boys game boy advance game boy color and daffy boy do you do it does he he wants a goddamn game boy chat he also wants a cell phone he never gets it sadly not in his contract and so he jumps, they get a chat. But then who shows up? Elmer Fudd. And it's like, Elmer, good to see you. Of course, we've seen Elmer Fudd earlier in the movie. Chad was working with Dad, working with Bugs on those cartoons. And he just says, hey, guys, even though we spent like 60 years working together, I'm evil. So I got to kill you. And they do the whole duck season, wabbit season, duck season, wabbit season. And then, Chad, I'll say this. I'll say this. We get probably the best uh sequence in the entire film i'll give the movie this because like you know what this is really inspired and fun because it focuses on death it, it, it becomes a warner brothers cartoon it's like oh this is really cool i could actually see them doing something like this in one of those new shorts or like an older cartoon where we follow elmer uh bugs and daffy and they're going into all the paintings in the in the louvre the museum and it's all in the different styles of the artwork and it's, it's pretty cool. So they, they, jump, they jump into the Scream, that whole thing, jump into the Mona Lisa, some other pictures that you've seen before. Like, I don't know the names of them, I just don't know. But it's like, this is really, and, and like they match that, that animation, the way the art looks. And it's like, you know what? This is really cool and really inspired. Too bad the rest of the movie couldn't have been like this. It it's, it's, kind of sucks. So, Mighty Welcome to Stream. Ronnie, good to see you. Yeah, the, almost yes, man. I agree. The, the, the museum scene is really good. It's really good. Starry Night. It, it, thank you, Austin. No, you guys help me out here. I appreciate you. And But again, that ends. And then we cut outside. And fucking... Oh, yeah, because Kate, she's kidnapped by Steve Martin's, like, big, tough, bald guy for whatever reason. He's like, I, I don't remember why. I guess she has something. Maybe it's like... Oh, no, because she has the phone with the map. That's why it is. And so he kidnaps her. And Brendan Fraser, he's going after her. And then we get, like, a whole uh, uh, action scene at the Eiffel Tower chat. Where he takes the phone from her and he gets on a helicopter. But Kate's like, no, you don't. She jumps onto the very large man. She just starts bah, just hitting him and everything. But it's like, you keep hitting him. Where are you going to go? Okay, you're going to fall to your death. 
And uh, she fucks it up, Chad. She doesn't get the phone back. The big tough guy, he flies away. She's fallen to her death, pump, plummeting towards her demise, Chad, on the Parisian street. And Brent Fraser's like, I gotta be the hero. And he fucking dr- jumps off, Chad, does this goddamn swan dive. And he catches her. Well, first of all, they would have hit the ground very quickly. Very quickly. Um, but he catches her, Chad, and he has his cell phone, Nokia, and he activates it, and it shoots out a grappling hook, and it attaches the Eiffel Tower. The thing is, Chad... If they were falling at the speed they were falling at, and uh, once it went taut, Brendan Fraser's arm would have ripped out from his body. They would have been moving, and then would have fallen to the ground. They'd both been dead. But it doesn't matter. It's a movie. I get it. And, you know, there's, they then, it, it goes taut. They swing over. Brendan Fraser grabs some chocolates. He grabs some fine wine, gets some flowers, and then they land in a little Parisian cafe chat where Daffy Duck and goddamn Bugs Bunny, Daff, you know, Bugs, he's enjoying a nice piece of carrot cake. Daffy's enjoying a nice uh, black coffee, if you will. They land there, and fucking Kate's like, oh my god, I'm horny! And she just begins smooching Brendan Fraser's face, yeah. It's already happening. Dark Star, thank you for the five minis! Cell phone Nokia. <laughs> they saved the movie! <laughs> oh. Damn, no audio. Is there no audio? We got audio? Hopefully there's audio. If, I, if I've been talking for the past 57 minutes of no audio, <laughs> that would have been great. I was like, What? <laughs> Um, all right. I would have, I would have lost my goddamn mind. I'd be like, what? The shit would have been ended. I'd be like, stream is canceled. <laughs> oh my God. Mm. And so now that Brendan Fraser and Kate, they're just smooching chat. I'm like, okay, now we can go to Africa. We can go to Africa at the Blue Monkey Diamond. And they just, they just go there. They just go to the fucking Africa chat. And they, oh, we, oh yeah. And then we cut, I'm sorry. Uh, we cut back to Steve Martin and he's like, yes, we have the map to the blue monkey diamond. Put it up there. But chat, the, the, the face, there's a face that covers up. It's Daffy Duck's face because he was jumping up because he wanted to take a picture of the cell phone, Nokia. And, you know, he blocked the map. He's, ooh, Steve Martin's mad. He's like, don't worry about it. We know that Brendan Fraser is, uh, is going to Africa and we'll just send after send after him one of our best agents, Chad. And he's like, release him. And then what's released, Chad, is the Tasmanian devil. It's like, oh, Jesus, it's Taz. And I don't know why this is necessary, Chad, uh, Chad but he's just, blah, blah, he's doing the, blah, 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 the thing that Taz does. And he farts at the end. And he goes, oops, excuse me. And it's like, why? Why do you mean a fart joke? And Ron Perlman says, uh, let's not use Taz because he's an idiot. And then they kill Ron Perlman. I, th- I, th- I forget who, who kills him. But he dies via fire chat. And he's a skeleton. Like I, I don't know why Ron Perlman's in this movie. And they're like, okay, send him to Africa. And then chat, we're following Brendan Fraser in the game again. And they're like, they don't know where they're going. They're like, oh, it's just too hard. And lo and behold, who comes to their rescue chat? Fucking Granny, Tweety, and Sylvester. And they're on a big old elephant. And they're like, oh, Brendan Fraser, you're here. It's like, Granny, I can't believe you're here, too. She goes, yes, it's very unexpected. <laughs> and then she gives, like, a weird fucking side eye to Tweety Bird. And they're like, mm-hmm. It's like, what was that about? But we shall soon find out. It's like, we'll help you. What do you need? And she's like, we're trying to find the Blue Monkey Diamond. And she goes, no problem. We'll help you get there. And they all pile on, chat on the elephant. Sylvester's trying to murder Tweety still. We also see some other Tweety birds. She had a variety of colors of Tweety birds. And they all peck at Sylvester chat. They rip out his eyes and things. Not a good, not a good day for Sylvester. We don't have to see Sylvester interacting with Bugs Bunny and Daffy Ducks. That was kind of cool. Despite him being pecked to death via like a guy in the birds chat. Like Alfred Hitchcock's the classic, the birds. Um, eventually they lead the granny. All right, no, they, they lead granny to get them to, a te- the, to the temple, the Blue Monkey Temple. And she goes, bye, bye, everyone. I'm totally leaving. And she leaves, chat, with Sylvester and Tweety. They go to the temple, chat, and uh, they get to where they need to be. And they find the blue monkey diamond. They think it's a blue monkey diamond. And they take it. Debbie looks like, what the fuck is this? It's like a little shitty action figure. I don't need this. I was expecting a diamond, goddamn. But then, chat, the, t- the temple starts rumbling. It's like, what's going to happen? What's happening? And, like, a staircase is or like, a bridge is revealed. And they go, like, oh, fucking Kate says... That's like a puzzle piece. We got to put it into that weird fucking globe thingy. And I'm sure the diamond will be revealed then. And they're like, cool. And so she takes it in there, chap. Puts that little sucker in there and fucking activates. And then the blue monkey diamond is revealed. And Dabby's like, I want that shit. He goes, whoa, 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 whoa. 
and he lines, he goes up there, chat. Remember, he's like, stop it, goddamn duck. You know, I'm gonna handle this, okay? He takes a chat. He's like, what, how, what am I? What, this thing feels weird. Oh. And then chat, he turns into a monkey. He turns into a capuchin monkey. And daddy goes like, well, fuck him. <laughs> It's like, Daffy, come on now. He established a friendship with Brendan Fraser. And Debbie's like, I don't give a shit about Brendan Fraser. I want my money, honey. And he's about to whack up. And Kate's like, no, you can't do that. And she turns him back into a regular Brendan Fraser chat. And he's like, oh, what was that? And then all of a sudden, Chad, who comes out of the fucking darkness of the temple? It's Granny. And she's like, I'm going to be taking that. And they're like, Granny, what are you doing? She's like, I'm not Granny. And then, Chad, she pulls back her zipper, and it's revealed to be Steve Martin. And uh, Sylvester is revealed uh, to be the, the big, bald, tough guy, uh, Steve Martin's bodyguard. And Tweety Bird pulls back his, his, uh, her zipper, his, his zipper, and it's revealed to be Taz, Chad, the Tasmanian devil. And this is the first interaction between Brendan Fraser and Steve Martin. Is the Brendan Fraser, I should have known it was you, Steve Martin. But Steve Martin's still struggling. He has another additional zipper. He's like, hold on, because I don't know we need another comedic bet. He's like, hold on, just can't get this with this hat in the way. So stupid. Awesome, take the 10 minis. So was it Steve Martin in the beginning? Ah, ah, all shall be revealed. All shall be revealed. Um, you're forgetting the gag? What gag am I forgetting to now? <laughs> what gag? Is there a funny bit in here? What was the gag? I don't, I don't think I forgot a gag. You want to remind me what the gag was? Please be my guest. And Steve Martin, he pulls back his zipper, and it's fucking Timothy Dalton. It's like, what the hell is going on? Timothy Dalton's he's just going, hey, man. Brent Frazier, I knew you had it in you to find this thing. I'm so proud of you. You are indeed my son. And Brent Frazier's like, thank you, Dad. You never like complimented me in my entire life. He's like, I know, because I'm not your dad. And he takes the zipper off again. It's Steve Martin. It's like, what? <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot. Okay, I forgot the gag. Oh, I shit. Oh, yeah. So he takes the zipper off. Excuse me. He takes the zipper off the first time, and he becomes Michael Jordan. And it's not even Michael Jordan in, like, a cameo. It's, like, Michael Jordan, like, from the actual spaceship they just insert into here. He didn't come back for here. He didn't come back here, chat. And then he takes the zipper off again. And then it's Timothy Dalton, chat. And then he takes the zipper off again. And Steve Martin again. It's like, okay, got it. Uh, and he's like, I tricked you. I just wanted to say something positive and then to destroy you. Brendan Fraser's like, that actually really hurt me, like, emotionally and psychologically. That's, like, emotional scars. Steve Martin's like, I know. That's why I did it. And then uh, he, uh, he tells... His bodyguard, now zap us with the teleportation gun. And the guard goes, okay. And he zaps them all, chat. But the guard, but the guns has a few, it's Acme made, so it has a few uh, bugs in it. A few kinks in it has not been worked out. So they're all teleported, chat, back to who knows where. And then, we, then Taz, because Taz is like, all right, I'm, I'm feeling kind of bad about this. You know, I'm like, I know, like, I'm a Looney Tune myself. And I don't want to, like, hurt anybody. You know, and this is all, this is all facade. And then the bodyguard, so stupid. The bodyguard's like, don't worry about it. And he pulls his zipper again, chat, and he becomes the female Taz. It's a female Tasmanian devil. And Taz is like, well, I just want to have, you know, intercourse right now. And they start smooching, chat, and they go, ah! And that's what they do. Really dumb scene. And then, chat, we, we cut back to Acme Labs, Acme Corporation, whatever. And then we just see a fucking abomination monster. Like, everyone's transformed inside of each other, chat. Fucking Steve Martin has the, the, the daffy's feet. He has bugs ears. Like, everyone's just a fucking freak. It's like, what the hell happened? And, you know, Steve Martin's just like, don't worry, guys. I'll fix this. But what he really does say, just <coughs> because he can't talk anymore. Because he has the, the innards of a duck slash rabbit hybrid monster and so but he he goes over there and he he fixes everyone thank god thankfully that product of acme works and he's like okay uh i'm gonna do my evil plan now um oh austin thank you for the 50 minutes so, so man yes yeah, so mandy <laughs> that's that's right oh it's so dumb darks i like I, I just don't i don't get it i don't get it and and steve martin's like okay evil plan uh, you already heard uh uh, uh junk cusack say it but as i said before Turn everyone in the monkeys around the planet, have them make Acme stuff, turn them back into good people, then have them buy the stuff. And, you know, Kate's like, that's evil. He's like, yeah, I guess it is. So, um, Marvin, Marvin comes in, chat. He's like, yes, sir. He's like, go put the blue monkey diamond, uh, attach it to my satellite dish, and then zap everybody with it. Marvin's like, yes, I will do that. And Marvin, he goes to the dad, he's like, fuck that. I want my goddamn diamond. And he goes after Marvin, chat. Steve's like, well, I, I guess that's going to happen. Uh, okay, I'm going to then imprison you 
in like a weird trap situation. And then I'm going to hang out in this tube with my chosen mate who is like, I think her name is a Karen. I think she's just Karen Chet. And we're going to create a new population of Karen Steve Martin hybrid people. So see you later because he's not going to expose himself to the beam chat. Because he says, well, I'm, we are going to be two people who are not going to be monkified. And so uh, Kate and uh, Brendan Fraser, they're tied up and they're lowered into like a weird pit thing in the, in the, in the, in the innards, in the halls of the Acme Corporation chat. And I'm like, oh, geez, I don't know what to do. I'm like, ah. What would my dad do? And then chat, we hear, we hear, the, oh, we hear those soft tones. Your dad would say that he loved you, Brendan Fraser. It's Timothy Dalton, chat. We see Timothy Dalton. He's all tied up. He's surrounded by TNT. Wiley Coyote was doing that. Why are you doing that, Wiley Coyote? Surrounded by TNT and like other explosives, chat. Fucking missiles all like directly at him. It's like, oh, this is not good. And it's like, Timothy Dalton's saying, like, listen. All right, you don't have to be a super spy to be the best person you need to be, Brendan Fraser. I've always been proud of you, and I've always loved you. And that's all that Brendan Fraser needs to hear, Chuck, because he just, ah, he bursts out of his bonds like Hulk, and he frees Kate, and he's about to go over to his, his dad, Chuck, to free his dad. But, oh, something drops down, Chad. It's a big old box, and something bursts out of him. I'm not going to tell you what it is, because now you got to cut the Daffy Duck. And Marvin... He blasts off in his little spaceship chap. He's going to space. Daffy gets in his own little spaceship. He's chasing after fucking Marvin. But then Daffy, he's complaining about this. He's like, I can't believe I'm doing this alone. And then he feels a hand on his shoulder, Chad, a gloved hand. He's like, you're not doing this alone, brother. And it's Bugs fucking Bunny. And Daffy's like, do we just become best friends? Hell yeah, we did. They do the fucking bro fist. It's like, let's take down Marvin the goddamn Martian. Let's end him for good. And they're like, hell yeah. And they go out there, Chad. They're chasing after Marvin. Marvin, he secures the blue monkey diamond uh, uh, to the satellite dish, and he's starting to beep and bop and boop, Chase, activating the goddamn thing. Bugs, he goes like, don't you take, you take control of the ship, Daffy. I'm going to try to fight him out there. But Bugs Bunny, he's, he's just, uh, he's being beat back by Marvin. He's not powerful enough. He needs that duck chat. And Daffy's like, I'm going to be the hero of this story. I could finally do it. I could finally do it because my best friend, Bugs Bunny, believes in me. And he's going to get sued up, Chad. What he's going to get sued up as? I shall tell you. Because now, we're going to cut back to Brendan Fraser. And he's fight him and Kate are fighting a giant robot dog. Uh, it's not, like, based on a specific character. It's just a robot dog. And, um, again, they defeat it by treating it like an actual dog. They throw shit. Like, they throw, oh, fetch. And it, like, catches it. And they, I think they feed an explosive or something. And it dies. It doesn't matter. And then... They, they rescue Timothy Dalton. They get him out of his bonds, chat. And they go up there to fight Steve Martin, chat, and to prevent him from doing more nefarious schemes. But then we cut back to outer space, and Daffy is like, it's time to become Duck Goddamn Dodgers. He's like, whoa, Duck Dodgers. I love Duck Dodgers. And he suits up, chat, and we get a, a gag where every time he puts on a jetpack, it explodes. Duck Dodgers. And every time he says Duck Dodgers, chat, he, he keeps exploding. He's like, I'm not going to say it this time. I'm just going to go. You know what I am, okay? It's a reference. Got it? I'm going to go save my best friend. He blasts off there, chat. And he gets into a big old uh, fisticuffs. We've got a wrestling match with Marvin the Martian, chat. He beats him back. He manages to destroy the satellite by, again, blowing himself up <laughs> in typical Daffy Duck fashion. That's what he's best at, chat. But he destroys this. Well, kind of destroys the satellite. He basically, he, he, he only causes the beam to fire at once. And it, it's aiming at Acme Enterprises, chat. The Acme Corporation. And right when Brendan Fraser, Timothy Dalton, and Kate, they're walking in, chat, Steve Martin, uh, he walks out of his safety tube, and he's like, are you old monkeys yet? And Chad, he sees that beam a-coming, and it's aiming right for the good old Steve Martin. He's hit by that fucking beam, chat, and he's turned into a capuchin monkey. And Timothy Dalton's like, you're under arrest, Steve Martin, monkey man. And he takes out these little monkey cuffs. And he's about to cuff him, chat, but when, when he, he cuffs him, he does cuff him. And then... Timothy Dalton, Brendan Fraser, they have a big old hug chat. Oh, it's a good, good manly hug. It's like good, you know, like, uh, like, ah, okay, that's enough, that's enough. And Timothy Dalton's like, listen, I always knew you had it in you. You can be whatever you want to be. You don't need to be an actor. You need to be a stunt man. You need to be a super spy. Like, I'm proud of who you are, Brendan Fraser. He's like, dad, that means a lot to me. And he's like, and Timothy Dalton's like, hey, what do you want to do? What do you want to do, buddy? And he's like, dad, I think we should move because chat, the fucking rocket that Bugs Bunny and Daffy Duck is heading right towards him right now. He's like, well, I, you want to move out of Beverly Hills? Are you sure? I mean, the place is fucking great. He's like, I mean, we should move in this spot right here. And he moves his dad out of the way, chat. And the rocket just comes right into the Brendan Fraser. He just gets hit by it. Boom. It's, I mean, he's, he flies. Hits the, god, hits the goddamn wall, chat. Explodes. Brendan Frazier's over there, over there, up there. He's, no, he's fine. They get out of the way. 
and they they open up the thing. Uh, Bugs Bunny, Daffy Duck, they're they're walking out, fucking you know, this arm in arm, they're having a good time. They are they are they are friends. They are brothers. They're having a good time with each other, and everyone's celebrating. Yay, we did it! And then this whole media crowd has walked up. Chad, everyone's uh, so excited and happy. Uh, fucking Daffy Duck, he's hired back by Warner Brothers. Yay! Also, Brendan Fraser meets himself because he's DJ Chad in the film, and he said because he does he did all of Brendan Fraser's stunts. In the mummy movies, which he says in the film, it's like aha, a little meta human there. And Brendan Fraser, he's a complete asshole. He doesn't remember DJ at all, and he's like, oh, you. He's like, oh, you're just a, you're worthless. You're just a stunt man. And then you know, fucking DJ punches him in the fucking face, and Brendan Fraser's nose implodes, and he's fucked up. Chad, he's like, well, now nah, I'll be the star in the mummy movies in the Tomb of the Dragon Emperor. So he's really jazzed about that, Chad. And then, you know, uh, Brendan Fraser and Kate, they start smooching as typical as you would. And then we cut to Daffy Duck and Bugs, and, you know, Bugs is like, okay, Daffy, we're going to do whatever you want from now on, okay? You're going to get a say in the matter. And everyone's just lauding Bugs Bunny, and everyone's ignoring Daffy. He's like, yeah, I'm finally going to get the respect that I deserve. I deserve. Everything's coming up, Daffy. And Chad is, but right when he says that, a fucking giant studio light uh, almost hits him. It's like, whoa, that was close. <laughs> oh, that would be terrible if it happened again. And the actual one fucking comes down him, Chad, smushes him, kills him. He's dead. That's fucking karma for your ass. And then, chat, we get the title card. You know, that, 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 that. And then, before you even say it, chat, they close on the lights. And poor old Porky Pig is like, fuck you. I quit. You know what it is. Go home. <laughs> and that, chat, is Looney Tunes back in action. Uh, not a great film. I don't recommend seeing it. Watch Who Framed Roger Rabbit. You know, I wouldn't even tell him, like, I know there's fans of Space Jam out there. I haven't seen the movie in... 20 years at this point so i can't even tell you to see that just watch who framed roger rabbit this movie is not worth it <sighs> there's like moments like a couple moments where like you know what that's kind of fun that's kind of fun but you can watch these on youtube i don't you don't necessarily need to watch the entire film for them and in that case like i can't give it a rental i really can't like i would probably have to get it's, it's some old bullshit it's a somewhat bullshit film. There's just watch the Looney Tunes cartoons. Just like I said, just watch the certain segments on YouTube or watch a better movie. Watch Who Framed Roger Rabbit. That's what I'm telling you, chat. Oh, stay thinking the 20 minis. So is Steve Martin Granny all along? Uh, yes. Yeah. Oh, well, in the beginning, I don't know. I think that was actually Granny. I believe that was actually Granny, who was his next door neighbor. Gra like I don't know, maybe he just knew Granny lived next door. He's like, oh, that's someone he actually knows and he has a good relationship with. So that's all become again. Steve Martin's just fucking manipulative the entire time, chat. But, yeah, that's a bad film. That last live action Looney Tunes movie, yep, yep, and yes indeed, Devin. And it's the one that killed that division of Warner Brothers, the uh, Warner Brothers, uh, what was it called? Feature animation. They shuttered it because this movie underperformed. Uh, against the $80 million budget, only made uh, $68.5 million worldwide. We're not going to do this shit again until they are going to do Space Jam 2, which I'm like, do we, need, do we really need a Space Jam 2? And honestly, chat. I don't really want him. Chris, Brady Mango, how uh, wasn't this a fuck you? Uh, uh, because it still had moments. It still had moments that I found enjoyable. You know, it's like the the, the whole museum segment was pretty funny. I did, I did like that, you know. I did like some of the interactions between uh, Bugs and Daffy. Uh, that's why I give it a, that's why I give it a some old bullshit. I, mean, I don't recommend seeing it in any case. You know, like, it had a, it had, I think it, for it to be like a fuck you, it has to have everything about it, I think, has to fail on every level for me. And there are still things in there that are like, this works, isolated it works. But in, as a whole, it does not. Glee, welcome to streaming, thank you for the 100 biddies. No, we don't need a Space Jam 2. Okay, thank you for answering my question. Yeah, Chad, I, we just don't need it. But, hope you guys enjoyed the review of a Looney Tunes back in action chat. Now, I'm still obligated to give you guys a scene by scene by scene by scene breakdown of Batman the Animated Series Episode 6 chat, The Underdwellers, a uh, infamous and notorious episode of the Animated Series, one of, the most, one of the least popular episodes in the pantheon of Batman animation. We'll be talking about in just a second. Mm. Sorry, maybe no, we don't need a Space Jam 2. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Very man. Fair enough, Juicy. Thank you. Oh, uh, I'll stick. I'm going to watch Luni Lunat uh, uh, Lunatics Unleashed. Oh, I remember that show. Uh, the Batman Beyond Looney Tunes. That's right. They, they're definitely trying to do a Batman Beyond version of Looney Tunes characters. I remember that. I watched that. Yeah. Space James was R. Kelly? Yeah, I don't want that. No, no, thank you. <laughs> uh, so, why do these studios rehash old movies? It's so. T I, I know. 
Yeah, they, they do that like a lot in this one. They also make a reference to Invasion, like the original 1950s inversion of Invasion of the Body Snatchers. They actually bring back the original actor for that movie. I was like, that's weird. This is, I, don't, I just don't get it. Yeah, this is a bad film, child.